Dear Bethesda, Hi, it's me, Austin! And sadly, this is probably the last letter I'll be writing to you. That is, until you release your next game. I've run the gamut of topics from the absurdity of laser weapons to how to build your own mini nuke. But you know, The Elder Scrolls has been a bit of a dark spot in my topic list, mostly because I didn't think there was any science to be found. And yet, last week while I was streaming Skyrim for funsies, someone asked me, Hey Austin, what's the science of the giant's ability to launch you into space? You know what I'm talking about, Bethesda. It's that charming little glitch, I think. You know, it's hard to tell with your games what's a glitch and what's a feature since the two seem to be eternally be inextricably intertwined. Regardless, almost every Skyrim player on the planet is familiar with the sting to their ego that's felt when they first see a giant outside of Whiterun and they say to themselves, I can take this. I'm a master gamer just as much as I am a master baiter. And they take those first fateful steps into antagonizing something capable of knocking dragons dragons out of the sky with their slender yet toned, hairy, delicious bodies. And then, before you know it, you're dancing in the sky, hundreds of feet in the air, with a full view of Skyrim, asking yourself, HOW THE FUCK DID I GET HERE?! But no. I can't. As much as I want to, Bethesda, I can't nitpick this. It's not fun! It's not science! There's absolutely no possible way I could do an entire video on this subject over analyzing what is effectively less than a second's worth of game mechanics, researching high-level force transfer physics, gravity, and oh my god! Oh my god, are we doing this? I think we're doing this! Bethesda! Let's go out with a motherfucking bang! Somewhere in Skyrim, a giant slams his or her club down onto the ground and suddenly a poor defenseless bandit or Dovahkiin is careening through the sky, questioning their life choices. You know, if this were something more straightforward, like the giant swinging their club upward, for instance, this would be an open and shut case. Just plug in the amount of energy needed to fling a body up into the sky, hit enter, and kaboom! 221,130 joules! But this isn't a simple math equation. Oh no. This giant is slamming their club into the ground and the end result is one person very high up in the air. How the fuck does this even happen? Well, before we can answer that, we're gonna have to gather the basics. How high are you getting launched by this giant monstrosity? And how quickly? The answer to this question is trickier than you may realize, but I think we can do it. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this! As with everything in Skyrim, the key to all of our questions lies in one thing. Horses. You see, the horses in Skyrim are modeled very closely after Clydesdales, and as such are the closest thing to an empirical ruler we can get in the entire world of Damriel. But horses alone aren't enough. We're gonna have to murder a lot. A lot of bandits. Eventually, we get lucky, and using the power of technology, we can estimate the speed at which these giants fling their poor victims into the heavens as well as how high they ascend. Using the trees as a reference, Friends, plus a few other fun tricks up my sleeve, we can determine that a mortal human is flung upward at a peak speed of 76 meters per second to a terrifyingly precarious height of 215 meters in just over five and a half seconds. And that, my dear lovelies, presuming the average person weighs 75 kilograms, gets us a nice cozy figure of 221,130 joules. The total kinetic energy of a car driving down the highway. Neat! Now this alone is quite a significant amount of energy to be delivering with a direct strike with a club, but this is not how these people are getting launched into the sky. The giants are hitting the ground with their clubs, which changes absolutely everything about how we need to figure this out, and it turns from a simple in and out math formula to one of the most headache inducing messes I've ever had to unravel, but fear not! I was up to the task. So let's talk about about waves.
Waves are all over the place. Sound waves, ocean waves, light or electromagnetic waves. At the end of the day, they're all the same, although their mediums are different. Waves are force carriers, not things. Waves move energy from point A to point B and beyond, like with sound. Sound is just pressure waves caused by vibrations moving from the location they're created to your ears, which absorbs the vibrations and sends information to your brain as sound. And waves are the only way a giant could launch you into the sky by hitting the ground. A giant has to hit the ground at point A with enough energy that by the time it reaches you at point B, you're flung into the air at 76 meters per second over 170 miles per hour. How this is done is complicated. I'll spare you the nitty gritty details, but here's what you need to know. Waves have a few basic components. The wavelength, the physical distance it takes for a wave to complete a full cycle, measured from peak to peak. The velocity, which is its speed forward, the amplitude, the total displacement up and down, and the frequency, how many times per second a wave cycle is completed, measured in hertz. In order to knock you into the sky, several things have to occur. The wave displacement has to be hitting you with enough force to actually impart enough kinetic energy into your body to send you upward. Secondly, it has to hit you fast enough to match the speed that you're heading upward. This wave is created by something hitting the ground. You can do this yourself, actually. Just tap your finger against something like a desk and you're creating a wave. Two waves, actually. First, a physical wave that you can feel if you, say, tap the desk and have another finger resting a short distance away, but also the microscopic vibrations in the desk are hitting the air and creating pressure differential making sound waves. You'll notice, though, that no matter how hard you hit a table, you barely, barely feel the vibrations in your other finger. Physical waves dissipate really, really quickly. Considering the range of the club attack is approximately one meter, it means we're working with a wavelength of approximately two meters in length, enough distance for a force to be imparted into the ground and for it to travel forward and deliver enough energy at its peak amplitude upward to turn any poor sap foolish enough to be standing too close into a Newtonian projectile. This energy is imparted in just over one one hundredth of a second, giving our mega wave a frequency of 30 hertz. Relatively low as waves are concerned, but don't fret, the pants shittingly terrifying numbers are on their way. Next, we need to talk about soil. You see, one of the biggest detriments to how efficiently energy is transported is the medium through which it is flowing. In this case, soil. And soil is a bitch. Thankfully, there's an entire field of science devoted to study exactly the sort of thing we're talking about, seismology. In the mid-1970s, seismology, the uh, study of earthquakes, was still a relatively new field, all things considered, which was first taken seriously after an earthquake ripped through Alaska and caused serious catastrophic damage in 1964. Ten years after this, some scientists wanted to figure out how terrestrial impacts like meteors would affect and create seismic waves. So, they dropped a bunch of shit onto the ground and recorded what happened. Unknown is the amount of cocaine or disco music that fueled this massive investigation but regardless, I am on board! What they learned is that, well, predicting and modeling seismic waves from impacts is fucking hard because the ground is notoriously unpredictable. Soil is almost never an even density, and even if it is, you can't control for everything. There's just far too many variables going into seismic waves. Seismic waves aren't even just one thing. There's P waves, S waves, surface waves, and Rayleigh waves. Too many to count. But taking what they've learned in their experiments, we can get a reasonable facsimile that'll do just fine, pig. Average soil density is 1400 kilograms per cubic meter. Knowing this, and knowing that our wave has an amplitude of 4 meters, we can ascertain that a wave moving upward at an amplitude of 4 meters in just under 1 one hundredth of a second is going to reach the speed of 240 meters per second, well within the speed requirements for our launch into space. But will it have have enough energy. Oh, you bet your sweet patootie it will. A wave moving through average soil at a wavelength of 2 meters, a frequency of 30 hertz, and a wave velocity of 60 meters per second will generate 2.2 gigawatts of power and deliver more than enough energy into our space cadet, giving enough room for error regarding imperfect transfers of energy. But this isn't enough, for in order to create a wave, energy has to be imparted into the medium carrying the wave, and it's here, my dear children children that things finally get scary.
A wave carrying 2.2 gigawatts of power will almost entirely dissipate after traveling 15 meters and would be over in a quarter of a second, but in this time, truly terrible shit will have happened. For one, there's a giant crater where the club hit the ground. Ah! The club hitting the ground with enough energy to send a wave of power rippling through the earth. This club has to penetrate the earth by four meters in less time than it takes you to blink and accelerate it to three quarters of the speed of sound. Taking into account energy and efficiency is a generous 20% and we've got this giant's club hitting the ground with three gigajoules of energy. That's the kinetic energy carried by a Boeing 767 at top speed slamming into the ground and imparting all of its energy in an instant. All from this comparatively tiny club. In order to pull that off, the damn thing would have to weigh 52 100 kilograms and have a density three times that of osmium, the densest goddamn thing in the universe that isn't on the inside of a fucking star. Holy shit, those giants must be ripped. But wait, there's more. Tell them what's behind door number two. Remember earlier when I said that impacts don't create just one kind of wave, they also produce another? Sound waves. You see, at sea level, this ground oscillating at 30 hertz and slamming into the surrounding atmosphere displacing atoms by four meters in mere moments creates a pressure differential three times what is normal. A 300% increase in air pressure in one one hundredth of a second. 628,067 pascals of pressure wave would shove its way outward in all directions from the point of impact with the club. What? That doesn't mean anything to you? What if I said that that was 177 decibels? Louder than the loudest sound ever measured. Well, sort of. You see, the ever measured is kind of important because it was the sound that was registered over a hundred miles away from the source. The source? A violent volcanic explosion at Krakatoa, which produced a shockwave so intense that it burst people's eardrums a hundred miles away. If by some miracle a giant missed you or you survived, your eardrums would be slammed with a pressure wave they were never meant to survive. Every eardrum within 25 five meters would be shredded like pork in a sandwich. If a giant launched me into the sky at my home in Champaign, Illinois, the Yebas would be able to hear it in Florida, Walter White would be able to hear it in Albuquerque, New Mexico, Hank Green in Missoula, Montana, and every ship lost in the Bermuda Triangle would be like, what the fuck was that sound? That was the sound of a giant ruining my day, and that was the sound of me showing you just how utterly fucking terrifying Skyrim giants are, and how clearly, demonstrably overpowered they are. How on earth they haven't taken over Tamriel by now is beyond me. Sincerely, Austin. P.S. It's winter time, I'm a YouTuber, and I have a newborn, which means I haven't left my apartment in days. I've actually lost track of how many days it's been, I need a haircut, I need a shower, and don't ask me why my hermitude is keeping me from showering. That's my business! Anyway, I've been stuck watching TV on the couch while feeding in the middle of the night, which means I'm burning through episodes of things so quickly I can't keep up. Thankfully, there's Crunchyroll, and thankfully, there's Yuri on Ice. Granted, I was a little bit disappointed that it wasn't, you know, a Yuri, but you know, this is good too. The cool thing about Crunchyroll is that they work closely with the people who actually make the shows you love and give them a fair cut for letting them host the videos. You can head on over to crunchyroll.com shoddy to start a 30 day free trial now. If you use the link and become a member, you can get these shows in full 1080p HD without ads. That's crunchyroll.com shoddy, which tells them you came from us. Thank you everyone for watching my episode about giants. I am so, so happy I was able to do this. I've been wanting to do a science on Skyrim for ages, but I haven't been able to think of a topic. Sadly, though I wish I could credit the Twitch user who asked me the question, I can't remember who it was. Also, I have some news. This is my last science video on Shoddy Cats. Don't cry, there's still science. It's moved over to, wait. Should I keep you in suspense? Nah, I'll just tell you, I'm joining the Game Theorist, which is pretty bittersweet for me, but never fear. I'll still be making videos on this channel from time to time. Things like the Skyrim War video that was like my Fallout one that I made. That will come someday, I'm sure. Someday. Anyway, I'm gonna go, I have a baby here, and my voice is ragged from recording two science episodes in one week. Can you hear the baby? The baby is like, I don't want you to do YouTube videos anymore. I want attention. Do the outro for me, baby. Ah!
<laughs> oh, that's not, that's not an outro. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Bye everybody! <laughs> Go watch my other science video on the Theorist channel. <laughs> That's it, it's live today! <laughs> Alright, let's see what your needs are. <laughs>